This video will continue to discuss linear relationships. Specifically, we're going to focus on how to find slope for linear relationships when they are shown as a table. Recall that a linear relationship is any relationship between two variables that will form a straight line when graphed on a coordinate plane. So far, we've been looking at graphs as a way to represent linear relationships. There are several other ways to show linear relationships. We can look at equations, we can look at written descriptions, and in this video we're going to discuss how to work with tables that are used to show our linear relationships. We see two examples in blue and red here of linear relationships that are represented as a table, and our focus is going to be how do we determine the slope for these tables. Remember that slope is the unit rate of change for a linear relationship. It will tell us how much the y variable changes by each time the x is increased by one unit. Remember that if a linear relationship is not proportional, we're going to need to use at least two data points to determine the slope. This is because the graph didn't start at the origin, so one data point, like 0 and 4, does not tell us how much the y and the x have changed by from the beginning of time. Instead, for tables, you already have multiple data points that you can use to measure slope. The tables today each have four rows or four different data points, and we only need two of those data points to determine the slope. First, we'll discuss the blue linear relationship, or this blue table here. We're going to measure the rate of change to find slope. We want to know as we go from each data point to the next one, how much does y change by and how much does x change by. From the first row to the second row, we see y goes up by 6 units when it travels from 4 to 10. And we see the x also goes up 2 units when it travels from 0 to 2. That rate of change could be written or should be written as a ratio in the form y change on the top, x change on the bottom, or y went up 6 as x went up 2. From the second row to the third row, we see again y goes from 10 to 16, that's an increase of 6 units, while the x goes from 2 to 4, another increase of 2 units, or a slope of 6 over 2. The final row, row 3 to row 4, shows us y will go from 16 to 19, or increase by 3 units, while the x will go from 4 to 5, or increase by 1 unit. That could be written as a slope of 3 over 1. What we see for each one of these ratios is that they all create the same slope, or like every linear relationship, we have a constant rate of change. That slope is 3, or 3 over 1, and it tells us that y will increase by 3 units each time the x increases by 1 unit. We see another example in red over here. As we go from 0 to negative 1, the y decreased by 1 unit. We use a negative 1 for a decrease, and the x increased by 2 units from 4 to 6. The same pattern repeats from row 2 to row 3. We go down by 1 unit for the y from negative 1 to negative 2, while the x goes up by 2 units from 6 to 8. In the final row, the y decreases by 2 units, while the x increases by 4 units. We see when we put these measurements these rates of change into a fraction in the form y change over x change every fraction or every rate of change is equivalent they all simplify to say negative one over two this slope is telling us the rate of change it says that y is going to decrease by one unit every time x increases by two units